Hello. Good morning. Hello. Hello, Laura. How are you? Hello, <laughs> Georgios. How are you? All good. How was your course yesterday? <laughs> you are mute. Okay. Look, today we are going to see the last, uh, the, the first to the last, uh, conventional thing, the compound thing, right? So I'm going to start straight away um, with a bit of concept first and then examples, right? So, what's your understanding of a compound thing, Georgios? The what do you think is a compound thing? 16 part thing, not a, how we call it, 2n equals 1, but the more, just a regular thing, but bigger, it's more complex thing. Uh, it takes the forms of the period or the, or the sentence, but within it there is another period or another sentence, in the periods, in the sentence something else, anywhere. That's what yeah. I understand. Something like that. Yeah, basically it's, as the name says, it's a compound of things, meaning that we are going to have a combination of two of the other conventional themes, eight bar standard that we have seen. And just to give you an advance, everything will be about the cadences, right? Everything is about the cadences, always in Cable Analysis. So it will be about how we can combine these cadences in order to give meaning to something that syntactically wouldn't make any sense or, or would become too repetitive. Yeah, if we if we say that there are two different things, yeah, it's evident that when we see a, when we are really in front of a compound theme, it's evident that it's the same theme. What we are labeling it's not two iterations of of a theme. Yeah, mm -hmm. which talks about as well or tell us the um, the importance of the syntactic side of things, right? So the syntax, though the harmony is our way to understand how the syntax relates, at the end of the day is the syntax which has to be given, you know, the message is what has to be given the most importance. So, well, we start. I will do it with the, with the whiteboard that we have here in the, in the Zoom. So, standard, in the same way that standard, there were eight bars in the, in the other themes, standard, these ones are 16 bars. And there are, obviously, we can extend them, we can expand them, we can do everything we did to the other themes, right? But standard, 16 bars. There are two types of compound themes. The first one, compound period. The compound period is built up of a compound antecedent and a compound consequent, right? So, the compound antecedent can be made of a presentation plus a continuation. So, main, basically, the first thing would be presentation plus continuation. Would, could be antecedent plus continuation and could be compound basic idea plus continuation, right? Can any one of you tell me why it cannot end on a consequent? No, it's about the cadences. And the whole thing. So let me help you with a, with a whiteboard. Uh, go, 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 go. Uh, it will have to end with a perfect cadence in the consequent, the perfect authentic cadence. Precisely. Mm -hmm. And what's the problem with that? Because that's half of the thing. We need <laughs> we need a weaker before the end. Exactly. So we're going to, to do it in a scheme so you can see it clearly. Precisely, Georgios, yes, very good. Yeah, that's why it can't end on a consequent. Yeah, it can't end on a consequent because of the cadence at the end. So, 
we go and we say presentation, for example. Presentation, right? Presentation has basic idea plus basic idea and then we have continuation. Continuation is always the case for a compound period, right? Sorry for the, I don't know what happens with the pen. So it's basic idea and then continuation can be continuation, fragmentation, right? And that's it. So if we have something like that, <coughs> All right. Obviously, we have basic idea, basic idea, something else. Remember, we are trying to have a compound period, right? So for the compound period, what will be the requisite? What do you think, Iris? In order to have a compound period, what's the main thing we should respect in terms of the architecture of the compound antecedent and the compound consequent? In this, the compound antecedent and this one the compound consequent what what do you think is a must in here the uh, returning of the basic idea exactly so having presentation plus continuation is fantastic because then obviously you can have again presentation plus something else and then the periodic structure is respected perfectly well yeah so, all right, talking about the presentation plus continuation, the reinstatement of the basic idea at the beginning of the presentation is perceived as a repeat. The return of the proper basic idea happens in the consequent. Yeah? So, in terms of our perception, do you, do you understand that? Laura? Do I understand it? Yes, if you understand that, what it means to say that the base, the, the repetition of the basic idea, the iteration of the basic idea is understood as a repeat. And the, re yeah. the return of the basic idea happens only in the consequent. What's the difference between repeat and return? Curious. So repeating, they're both three statements. Repeating is immediately. Exactly. Returning is after something has intervened. Precisely, precisely. So the return for the periodic structure, we need a return. Right? We don't need a repeat. We need a return. Why? Because we need to have basic idea and then we need to have contrasting idea. Right? And then basic idea and cadence. Yeah? So B A C I B A C I. And then here we have more or less the same. We have this B I repeated, which is then B I repeated. Yeah. B I and B I. So all right, then we have antecedent plus continuation. Antecedent plus continuation. So this one, did you understand it? Do you want to ask me any question about the, the presentation plus continuation? We will see examples then. Any questions? No, I think it's the clearest of all of them. Georgios. No, tell me, tell me. In the, oh, we're going to see, I saw an example where the compound antecedent, there was, the first example had, I can't remember exactly, but it had two cadences. It was, hmm, Antecedent and continuation, probably. Yes. And it were to have cadences within the compound antecedent, which we never see before. Well, really. I am going on that now, actually, on the yeah. on the topic of having two cadences. It's quite commonly encountered. You can have half cadence, half cadence, half cadence, perfect, perfect authentic cadence, actually. I'm going to see now. So, precisely now. Right. So, we go for the rest now. Clear. That's it. Uh, antecedent plus continuation. Antecedent plus continuation. So antecedent we would have um, basic idea, contrasting idea, and then continuation. What's the main difference? 
cadentially between this proposal and the proposal that we had before. Harmonically, harmonically. Yeah, exactly, Yorgos, this is what you wanted to say. Yeah, so... The, there are two cadences. Yes, we have one cadence here, half cadence, and we know that to have a compound period, we need another half cadence here. We don't have any other choice, right? Imperfect, but... Uh, yes, okay. we could have an imperfect authentic cadence as well, and I'm going to go on that topic too. I will go on that topic now. So, harmonically, we would have HC, HC, and then a perfect authentic cadence at some point in the end, right? And this end continuation could feature a convenient cadential distribution like, could feature a convenient cadential distribution like, half cadence, your cadence, Georgios, incomplete authentic cadence, have cadence and perfect authentic cadence, though it is rarely encountered in the repertoire. So, would it be the perfect thing? Probably yes, but we, for some reason, it wasn't the choice of, of, of most of the composers. Yeah, but it's, it's true. If you if you want to write something like that, you can. Yeah, it, it, there is nothing against the the structure. Nevertheless, nevertheless, by definition. A period is strongly, is more strongly a period if it ends on a half cadence. By definition, right? So that's why we don't see a compound antecedent ending in an incomplete authentic cadence. Though it's allowed, yeah, we, we could al allow it, the common practice doesn't seem to endorse that. Yeah? It's more like an exception, yeah? So, keep your radars on because you will find mostly HC, HC, right? This is quite commonly encountered. So, have, have cadence, have cadence here, have cadence again, perfect authentic cadence. This requires a, a half cadence. One second, Yeah, we could reinterpret as well the half cadences so they are reinterpreted as perfect authentic cadences at some point realigning these sorry aligning these elements with this uh, what what comes here and bringing them together right so we can make it happen as a but we are not going to talk about that at the moment yeah um, the compound consequent can repeat the antecedent or end in cadential. So the compound consequent could be exactly the same in this case. Could be antecedent plus continuation and again antecedent plus continuation. Or could be antecedent plus cadential. Most, the easiest way to build it up is to actually have antecedent plus cadential. Yeah? So then it will be very easy to actually produce the effect of closure in perfect authentic cadence, giving it a bit more space you know, to the perfect authentic cadence to actually happen. All right, and then we have the famous compound basic idea. What is a compound basic idea? Laura, do you know what is a compound basic idea? Is it just where the basic idea kind of gets... Um, change a little bit so it can be like transpose or like rhythmic development and all that kind of stuff. No, no, no. The, the, oh. the <laughs> it's simpler than that. The compound basic idea is the same as the antecedent but is tonic prolongation and in harmony. So the, the basic idea that we had in a sentence was tonic prolongation by, by definition. We couldn't actually have any sort of cadence there because the cadence was postponed to the end, right? To the end of the sentence. The compound basic idea is the same. 
harmonically speaking. So though syntactically you would have the basic idea and a contrasting idea syntactically. So I mean pitch wise, rhythmic wise, yeah, but ha harmonic wise you wouldn't get this in a compound basic idea. Obviously that facilitates a lot the analysis because then you just postpone the half case, you only have one cadence in the end, right? And then here the same, you have a compound basic idea, so you repeat and you have the compound period, and then you have the cadential and perfect authentic cadence. Yeah. As you can see, the decision that we take at the beginning defines what we have at the end. No? So whatever structure we have for the first theme conditions the structure we have at the second theme in the compound period, for example. You see? So the decision is about the first one, not the second one. Yes or no? Hmm? So, why? Because as you need to repeat, anyone can say why or I say myself? Because in that period, the safest thing to do is repeat the first, I don't know how to call it now, basic idea, whatever the first four initiation, the initiation unit, you can call it. We will call it like that at the end of the day, yeah. Cool. So half of it is already done. And then the cadence will probably be cadential, so that's also done. So Exactly. Whatever you choose, precisely, Georgios, whatever you choose here has to be here. So then the question would be only there, and we are giving space to change there always. And that really did, doesn't change the structure, because it doesn't matter if you have continuation or cadential. Quintessentially, it's the same anyway. So then, and plus, plus, we said by definition that the first statement is always combined with continuation. It's not combined with... Um, with a consequent, for example. So then, and you need here, um, you, you wouldn't place here a consequent for the same reason you wouldn't place here a consequent. Yeah. All right, we continue. Then we have the other possibility, which is the compound sentence, the compound sentence. The compound sentence It's tricky because it, it really requires a different um, wrapping up of the of the elements that are inside the compound theme. So we are going to go slowly to make sure we all understand it. So the concept of compound basic idea makes perfect sense within this framing. Why? Because at the end of the day, you know, the compound sentence, for some reason, works more like a bigger idea because all the first thing will be invested in something that doesn't actually make any cadence which is odd we have to have eight bars which do not cadence so the concept so the the propelling expressive qualities of this theme type make it perfectly suitable for opening of large genres like the symphony or the concerto because we are postponing the cadence longer than in any other time, in any other case. We, we, we never had anything not cadencing at all in, in for eight bars, and then would, that would cadence just later. So, compound presentation, an open-ended initiating unit is immediately repeated in the context of tonic prolongation and harmonies. Yeah. Cadences are not allowed. The concept of initia initiating units is something I want you to keep, the initiating unit, because when we, we cannot label a theme within any category that we've studied, yeah, we will do what Kaplan does, and we will say it's an initiating unit. Yeah, It's a wonderful concept because it's the joker, yeah? so we can use it anytime we don't know what it is. Maybe then we realize the initiating unit is something actually, but you, you can you can just say it's an initiating unit if you are not sure at the at that point. 
uh, is immediately repeated in the concept of tonic or longitudinal harmonies. Cadences are not allowed. The compound basic idea is most often repeated in the dominant, like a statement response. Remember the three different possibilities in the repetition of the basic idea? Do you remember them? It is. Uh, yes, it was exact, exactly the same repetition. It could be the in the dominant. Yes. And the question. Very good, precisely, exactly. So in the case of the compound uh, presentation, it's almost always statement response, right? So it's in the dominant, yeah, or in the fourth, it could be as well. It is very rarely literally repeated and almost never sequentially repeated. Though it can happen. So, Antecedent, consequent or statement response. Without cadence, there is no antecedent consequent. Okay? Sure? Because you can get confused with that. So, because you have a, a compound basic idea, which is basic idea plus contrasting idea. And then you have basic idea plus contrasting idea again. So it's quite possible that you get confused and you think that that is a period. But if there is no cadence in the first section, basic idea, contrasting idea, let's go in, let's do it like this. This is tonic prolongation yeah and then we have basic idea contrasting idea again in statement response so it will be the fifth or the fourth okay so what makes this not an antecedent and a consequence well that there is no cadence here for example Compound presentation, even in the presence of dominant harmony in the statement response, even in the presence of dominant harmony here, you will not cadence. All right? Now, this was the compound presentation. Then we have the compound continuation, right? It fuses with the cadential function to end the theme in any of the three possible cadences. Its fragmentation tends to go for two measure units at least to start with. Yeah? We had a basic idea that was two measure units. Contrasting idea, two measure units. So the compound basic idea that we restated in the dominant lasted for Four bars, precisely. So if we do a fragmentation, it will be at least two bars. As opposed to how many in the past, in the normal thing? One. Exactly. Um, compressed continuation. It is common to see compressed continuations. Compressed continuation. So what does that mean? This is eight bars long. Correct? Now, what uh, Kapling is uh, talking about here is that, well, maybe you can find a continuation which wouldn't be compound, right? Which would only be four bars. You could find that. So you would end with a compound. Yes. Sorry. Kipling, I think, says that even if it is uh, eight bars, it's not compound. Even if it's exactly, because it doesn't have uh, two processes involved. It's only one thing. So, why? But more than why? Why four of them? If it's, oh, no, many questions. Why, why four of them? Why four of them? Why eight bars? And then why four bars? Because it's all about how long you need to express the function. It's all about that, actually. It's not about the cliché of doing it in eight bars and eight bars. 
It's about how much you need to express the sense of continuation, what is the same to say, the sense of fragmentation. Maybe depending on the on the on the drive of, of, of the motifs that you're using, maybe with four bars you do it already. You don't need eight. It depends on we will see it in the examples. Nevertheless, it commonly by standard it should be eight bars. Yeah, commonly. But you should be prepared to label something that is twelve bars as well, compound sentence. Compressed continuation. So it is common to see compressed continuations for measures long. It is common to see ECP, expanded cadential progression, supporting continuation cadential phrases. In these cases, the composer generally repeats the continuation or adds a post-cadential section as to restore the proportions of the compound theme. I repeat again. In these cases, the composer generally repeats the continuation or adds a post-cadential section as to restore the proportions of the compound theme. So if you have actually a compressed continuation, normally supported by an ECP, which is forcing the compressed continuation, actually harmonically speaking. Yeah. Now remember that the in most of the cases of the of the of the eight bar themes, we have we have a, a for, in, in the in the continuation we very often have an ECP. Remember an expanded cancer progression. Because it's the easiest way to actually wrap up the end of the, those four bars. In general, in general, not all, but in general. So in this case, if we if you want indeed to wrap up in four bars something that was eight bars before, the ECP becomes almost a need. Yeah, in the, in, before it was an option, you could still do two bars of fragmentation in a, with a little sequence or something, and then go back to the in the last two bars to cadence. In this case, you need to really start closing up from earlier because you have more drive from before, you have more pull. Yeah, it's eight bars. It's it's a it's a bigger truck to 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 stop. So you need something a bit more. Uh, decided in, in that continuation. So, for example, the ECP will help a lot. Um, nevertheless, nevertheless, for this uh, taste of for symmetry, this, the taste for symmetry that we, we have as human beings, uh, sometimes asks to repeat the, the continuation or the ECP, so it actually meets the the eight bar symmetric disposition. Yeah, so you have eight bars compound presentation and eight bars of repeated ECP, for example, in the continuation, repeated literally, yeah, or not literally but repeated. Then standing on the dominant, standing on the dominant and consequent function. Okay, so we go. If the sentence ends in a half cadence, the composer will enhance the effect by adding a standing on the dominant. If the sentence ends in a half cadence, right, which is not supposed to, yeah. but if the sentence ends in, a, as in the end, yeah, um, the compound sentence ends in a half cadence, the composer will enhance the effect by adding a standing on the dominant. Yeah. The post, the, this post cadential material reinforces the dynamic energy associated with the instability of ending in the dominant. So, if you have a compound sentence, unusually ending in a half cadence, which it can end on a half cadence, it, the, the normal sentences could end very well on a half cadence. Normally, that choice, what, what I say is that it's unusual that you choose to end on a half cadence after 16 bars of theme. <laughs> That's quite. Uh, non-resolving, yeah. It's like we, we are talking a lot. We are saying a lot of things. We are saying double of what we normally say, and we are not actually re are reaching a conclusion. So maybe the conclusion is actually being mobilized, yeah. And that's why we have not, not so rarely we have the air standing on the dominant on top, yeah, because it's actually the point we want to make. We want to actually reinforce the dominant, yeah? And then we have another point, which is the consequent function, reinterpreted as continuation. 
It is fundamental for the compound consequent going back to the period to feature the return of the basic idea. Okay? If you don't have the return of the basic idea, you don't have a period. Okay? It sometimes happens that the basic idea seems to have returned earlier. But this is normally compensated with the fact that the basic idea returns in the tonic in the consequent, while the basic idea must have been repeated in a random harmony beforehand. Very particular case. So, for example, you have any of the of the previous structures, like let's pick one that is easy to. The, the problem is continuation. So we have, for example, antecedent and continuation. Right? So we have basic idea, contrasting idea, and fragmentation. Right? It could happen that within the fragmentation we somehow give the, the impression that this is repeated. Yeah. So then we may repeat it within a sequence, but then here it will be re it will return on the same harmony. Okay, that's the difference. It's an ex it's an ex an, an exception yeah, that we will see. Now in the exam. All right. So, any questions so far? No. Okay. Very good. So we're, we're going to see some examples. At the moment, we have seen with I will do a little review. We we have seen with fairly nice level of in depth. Sentence, period, hybrid themes. Now we are going to wrap up the, the compound themes. And also we, we paid a lot of attention to abandoned cadences, evaded cadences, deceptive cadences, interpolation, extension, expansion. So the only remaining building blocks that we have to still learn are the uh, framing functions you know, that we have discussed but we haven't seen with the same level of in-depth we have seen the other ones so we will see that soon yeah and then after that that's it you have all the building blocks to analyze anything so you will be ready to start all right so on that note you've sent me homework i received homework from you, Georgios, and Iris, right? And Laura as well, no? I don't remember. I um, remember. I've done it, so I can send it if you haven't got it. Okay, good. Okay, let's see. So I've seen, first of all, I've seen Iris yesterday, I think. I just sent the interpolation, but I'm sending right now the actor because I didn't have internet. Okay, you send me the interpolation, but I can't find the interpolation. Just one second. Anyway. You see, I've seen it. Here it is. Interpolation for Monday. Okay. All right. We'll see that one. The other one I am sending now. Uh, Iris, can you share the screen yourself or not? Uh, I, I can in five minutes if I switch to the computer because I'm with the iPad. Okay, because uh, if I open the interpolation myself, I have to open it in C values and it will probably crash, crash my. Okay. Then, if you want to go with another one, because yes. I have to... Yes, you send me something? Yes. Okay, share the screen. Laura, the same. If you if you want to show me something, share the screen directly. So, I, because I'm doing the streaming here, and otherwise we waste a lot of time. So, whoever wants to go first... 
Georgios, ok, let's see. No, I have to allow you, sir. And I need to open the news for one second. Yes. Lord, if you are in the. Uh, yeah, Lord, if you are ready, you can go. Okay. Okay, the tea. I sent you this and Okay, play. I play. Let's sound. Sound. <laughs> It's very good actually. Again. Ah, ah, no. mm -hmm. Very yeah, obvious I made it. Yes. It's very good. It's very good. And also you made very good use of the of the drum and yes. the yeah, well done, we, and the Alberti Bay. So it sounds extremely classical. Yeah, very, very well done. And then very tasteful to do the, at the end, the, the different articulation in the, in the second statement. Uh, no, well done. And mm -hmm. also to have it in the, in the first statement with a, a more, more polyphonic, but then you somehow you dislocate it in the end, so it becomes a bit more. Dynamic. Well done. Well, well done. Very, very well done. Also, All... This was a mayhem in my head. The bit classet. So many numbers. So many numbers. But that one we see it in combo. That we see it in the next block. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. The same for, for Iris. Then we, that we see in the next block. Uh, okay, Iris. Um, Okay. Very well done, Giorgio. Very, very well done. We are getting there with the language. Yeah, it's, it was a long trip, but we, you are there. I don't know if I understood. Okay. I mean, I oh, it, it, just... Play it once and then explain it, and then we, we see what mm -hmm. you try to do. So, describe what you've done. For me, the relation, it is here. So if I take it out, it still makes sense. Again, again? Um, so if I take this out, the rest still makes sense. And, and it's some new material that has nothing to do with this. It's true. Play it one more time. Let's see. That's how you thought it, no? So. And then you added something in between. Yes. We are good. 
And it's, it's, it's a, a bit, bit like, like an invaded cadence. cadence. It's a bit like an extension. Okay. I just, I, I thought about that. I thought, like, okay, this sounds like an invaded cadence, like, I'm going to finish, and then just something uh, appears. But, I mean, I should put it in consideration. I mean, I'm not in the, the beginning of the consideration. What is the main difference between <laughs> an interpolation and an extension? I thought the interpolation was a kind of extension, so no, I'm not sure. Yeah, no, but it's important that interpolation don't, uh, don't continue, don't, don't um, groups with anything. It has to be completely in between. Yeah, like, and this one, if you pick it from here... It seems to be part of that. It's like an evaded cadence that then launches into this. It's like, if we think about it, it's like a, it's a, a big upbeat. It's a big upbeat, or has conceptually, like a big upbeat of the last bar. A big presentation of the last bar. While the interpolation is not a presentation of the following thing, it's not a, a continuation of what happened before, it's nothing at all. I think it's the syntax, maybe. What? Look, for example, the left hand. No, of your in, of, of your in between quotes interpolation, the left hand, it has the same design as the as the last bar. Doesn't it? Yeah, I think it's more an extension than an interpolation. It's more an extension. It, it works beautifully. Musically speaking, it's fantastic. It's not criticizable, musically speaking. Just for the sake of the exercise, yeah, it should be more um, more eccentric, I think. Yeah, a bit more eccentric. So, do like this. Instead of doing another full exercise, just work on that, on that bar to make it more an interpolation. Right? And you send it to me. Should I just move? The place because maybe it's confusing. In the position because it's there. Yes, you are placing it in the end where the cadence is, which doesn't help at all. Yeah. Okay. All right, and then Laura, sorry, I didn't, I didn't hear if you, if you had the, the example or not. Yeah, I have it, but now I don't know if it's right at all. Well, let's see, let's see. Don't worry. You can share. Mm -hmm. Okay. Laura, you need to share. Laura, you need to share with sound. So stop share oh, and share again oh. and then click the the box that says share with sound. In Zoom. Oh. In Zoom. Okay. That when you press share down to the left, it says optimize for video clip and yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh, I said I need a password, password to do it. Um, you need a password. I yeah, it's a thing for my computer. computer but ah, okay. Here it is. Is this, does this work? Can you hear Yes, Let, let's go from the beginning. Let's see. No, no, it, it's not sharing the sound. It's, it's... Oh. <laughs> have, have you pressed the, have you, have you done the, um, the password and it was fine? Yes. Yeah, no, I don't know what the password is, and then it just went back onto it, so I thought it just did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, don't worry, we can imagine. Or I can play it myself. It's fine. Let, let's see if, if it goes. Let's try once again. Okay. I will play. I will play. Are 
How you have there? Okay. And now the interpolation. So the the interpolation um, it's not the, the perfect example of interpolation mainly because of it sounding like part of an ECP. Yeah? It's like you have F major. Yeah, so it doesn't seem you're interpolating anything. It seems that you are just writing a, a cadential progression. Yeah, so yeah, you both need to work again a bit on interpolation. So for it is just make it happen a different sec part of the of the piece. Yeah, so it doesn't work as a as a cadential. For Laura, um, you have to make it more eccentric. Remember what both of you remember what the word eccentric mean. Right, it's out of the center, right? So out of the uh, expected. Yeah, it has to be more uh, more crazy. Yeah, it, it can't be so so um, polite. Yeah, it needs to be a bit more uh, like it shouldn't be there. Yeah, to be an interpolation. All right, more naughty, like in the Mozart example. Yeah, a bit more naughty, tasteful, but more naughty, more more comic. So so well, um, we stop the block here, right? Um, 